Hello everybody, my name is Marcus Medina and I am the writer and creator of the Iscariot novel that is currently in the making under the imprint that I've created, XL Studios. And uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation slash video that I didn't even uh, rehearse for or anything, as you can tell. Um, so I'm going to just give you a little video tutorial about my story and uh, why I think you should check it out. Um, anyways, uh, again, the story is written by me um, and my illustrations um, were all, mostly at least those in the book, were created by Reen. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward with the presentation. Okay. Now, you're probably wondering, what is Iscariot anyways, and what is this guy talking about? Um, well, again, it is a novel in the making. It's not yet complete, but in this day and age, information and technology works really fast, and I know that uh, for the average readers um, out there, they want to read a whole story. Uh, and there's a lot of other readers out there who read uh, a little at a time so uh, this uh, release is a little bit tailored more towards the kind of guy I am I mean I like to read a little by a little but I also can remember a whole lot uh, that I've read and uh, hopefully that hopefully I will be able to bring two audiences together on this um, but this is actually a really big project so uh, for me to get the story out there is very important. It's more important than uh, if I can just wait maybe one to five years before actually releasing a book and waiting for publication. So um, this is uh, one of the biggest things I actually have done, at least in the creative field, and this is one of the things that I've always really wanted to do. Um, again, uh, you're probably wondering what is the story about. I'm sorry if I got a little off track, but um, first off, this story is about a teenager who finds this magic power that uh, gives him superhuman strength and abilities that, of course, are outside of uh, normal human capacity. And um, another thing that this story kind of deals with on the side of course you can't have a character that's too invincible or too powerful so you have to give him some conflict right well anyways uh, the character does encounter certain conflicts in the story uh, one in particular is the um, poverty and you know of course poverty is a big issue in the world and it also leads to certain types of uh, events uh, some fatal even some pretty mild and uh, basically what I wanted the character to kind of come up with or come up through was uh, the poverty thing um, I know I can't say that I know everything about poverty but I know enough to recognize and uh, and sense that that it is a major problem and I wanted to at least not make this too much of a big issue because it's Again, the story is not centralized around um, just poverty, but many other things. Poverty is just one of the things that the character you first see, and uh, you can see how he lives through it and how he overcomes this uh, sort of stressful thing. Um, the other ones will st start to stand out a whole lot more, which is the reason why I don't want to disclose the information yet until you actually get the chance to read it. But yes, there are some issues. Uh, one that I didn't mention here um, is bullying. Uh, of course, uh, most teenagers don't get bullied, but we know, we know it. And uh, this, at least the first few chapters of the book, uh, do show a little uh, hint of what the main character, Scary, goes through. Um, the primary focus of the story actually is the action. Um, it, there's a reason why it's focused on action and development and it's just mostly because that's what we like to see, that's what we like to hear, that's what we like to picture in our minds 
when we read a book is action. If there's no action, then there's nothing. Um, and yes, there's a little drama here and there, but action is the primary focus of the story. How the uh, characters will interact with each other, and uh, hopefully it'll all work out fine. I mean, it's all uh, basically all this this crazy idea from the past and uh, that I have for the future all coming together. Um, so hopefully it'll work out, if I even know what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways. Um, this project is a very big project and one thing I will try my best not to do is to drag the story along. Um, I will try to um, at least create a glossary or something so that you know um, a lot of readers won't get discouraged from reading too much information uh, because there's a lot of information and uh, one thing that I've kind of learned through creative writing was to not write too much background. So uh, I'll try my best not to do all of that. Um, because the book is estimated at six sagas, whole sagas estimated at six books, but maybe more, maybe less. It depends. Um, it depends on how I can put these ideas together. Um, the story's been outlined so far to two books. Um, the original stories were written and they were verbally told but um, of course over time over the 15 years of making this story of course things get thrown away and stuff like that and especially not by me but of course you know mom cleans up a lot and, um, yeah so this is my time to actually write the book now that I have the resources and the power um, to do it uh, that's pretty much what this is all about um, so you're in for a ride, but trust me, once the full book comes out, that will be it. There will probably be no more previews, <clears throat> except for maybe in the distant future, but um, I hope to really make this thing grow enough so that I can keep going. I mean, it's, of course, uh, you want to know if, you do, if you're doing good and you want to know what you're doing is good so that you can keep doing it. And... Uh, you're probably also wondering what categories this book's in. Uh, of course, as you can read, uh, action, fantasy, teen fiction, young adult. Uh, these are probably fit the best, but I, I've always considered my story to be made for the person who was uh, my age when I made it. I was 15 years old. Uh, however, making this book, I know that even younger, uh, there are younger people that can read it. Um, I probably recommend anywhere from 12 to 13 and up. Uh, but, you know, of course, there's nothing so far that I've written that would be too sensitive for uh, anyone a little younger than 12 or 13. Uh, what this book does have is action. And uh, as you can see at the bottom of my presentation, uh, this was originally supposed to be a story for a video game. Um, so I could, I've always, was able to see this story being actually made for something much more bigger than the novel. Uh, but uh, when I was younger, I never seen it that way, I'd never seen it as a novel. I just always wanted to write a book and I always wanted to just write stories and that's where this idea comes from. The um, original idea that I can make a story for a game. Uh, came about in 1998 after beating a game called Final Fantasy VII. I mean, it, this is the game that revolutionized games, especially RPGs today. Um, first, one of the first and biggest CGI games after Myst and all of that. And um, This, of course, if you know Final Fantasy VII, you know where I'm going with this. But everyone else who don't know, Final Fantasy VII is an RPG uh, CGI game or they call computer generated uh, video game with full motion videos and a lot of action and some, no not some, but a lot of drama and uh, after playing that game you just have to wonder what's going to happen next and someone like me always go back to that game some just to just to just to bask in its glory but uh, you know little did we know that Advent Children, uh, Last Order, Dirge of Service, uh, all these titles, or um, not Ur guys, but Advent Children, again, 
these films brought the game back to life and uh, or they brought the game story back to life and it was amazing I mean it was amazing to see that it actually happened just to see that there was some kind of closure afterwards after spending hours of course on the game but uh, it it was the driver so I'm gonna go ahead and move on and uh, introduce the main character of the story now Iscariot the title character is the main character of the story and he's the central character of this pretty much this universe that I've created um, he lives on an alternate earth and he's from a um, he's 16 years old by the way first let me say that in, in order he's 16 years old he's a high school student he actually lives in a town called Nazareth and uh, Nazareth is um, of course a name that I got from you know a biblical name again uh, Nazareth is a pretty much a developing town I mean it's not really it's not really a um, like a big city or anything it's probably much like the same kind of place where I was from uh, Dallas Texas but it has a big difference I mean there is actually a slum there a slum village and uh, you know we don't really have villages in Dallas but <laughs> there's a village instead there there's a small suburbia there's a big city area but it's all pretty much like this this uh, city scattered out uh, it's flat and it's just everywhere and it's not uh, the buildings and structure of this place I've imagined it as not being so crowded as here where I live in Korea but uh, it's um, it's, tr it's trying to get there and its neighborhood city uh, which is a little off is where the biggest companies are so it kind of brings and makes this world this big country this big continent smaller the continent he lives on Misoa, which is uh, of course a uh, name that I kind of play with off of Mesoamerica so this is just like you know this earth that I made is kind of Pangea but just split apart a little bit and there's chunks of land here and there these three big chunks of land uh, represent the uh, a triangle of power of you know who has the most control in the end and uh, this kid is pretty much caught up in between his love for the world and uh, things like that because of course he's uh, as it says multi-ethnic human he's uh, sort of mixed with everything so, something like me <laughs> so uh, when I first made this character he was supposed to be made in this real world and he had a different name uh, I'll talk about that later a little bit about how I evolved him from that and uh, I just decided to make the character more like me because it was only fair and uh, he has a fighting style so again as I said before this is an action story and he has a fighting style um, after you know of course growing up on like Bruce Lee movies and things like that I, I kind of wanted to make a story like that I don't know it's just crazy but um, he has a fighting style it's mixed he's more of an observer who actually becomes a fighter a little later and uh, of course every action story has to have a special power I mean if you're I mean I'm not talking about like just like you know fighting fighting I mean like you know uh, something like one of the most inspirational animations of all time when it comes to action Dragon Ball I mean I, I don't know if whoever's watching this might not like it I like it I'm sorry I mean I grew up on it uh, I was a kid at the wrong time and of course Power Rangers the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or the Kyoru Sentai Zuranja uh, Japanese TV show uh, that has to be special attacks and there's one he has called Justice Shot it's actually a, um, pretty much like there's three levels of this attack but Justice Shot is the first level and uh, then you have like some small notes about him just to say uh, here I uh, wanted to touch up on this he's a leper and what is what is a leper? A leper is a person infected with leprosy in this story uh, leprosy is a bit different here um, it's also uh, not, a, not a such as a contagious disease but it's an infectious one that uh, 
and again I will talk about that <laughs> um, but yes he's stricken with this disease that is supposedly about to kill him in about four years and uh, there's a story behind it but in the main story we, we're going to keep going all the way and just just show how he goes from this kid who dreams to this kid who does and uh, of course like me he hates mayonnaise and loves video games so um, just to let you all know that Rin was the one who designed the character in this current form and this is his form uh, I've designed him in other ways that you probably would see online uh, but that is the way that we're going to go okay so um, before we close um, just want to introduce this book that I have it's called the Neo Alpha and this is basically a book that contains three of the previously released books uh, the Alpha, the Beta, and the Gamma. Uh, the Alpha wasn't really a commercial book at one point because I made some mistakes and I didn't want to go with this style. Um, I'll probably talk about the styles and how I got from the graphic novel to the regular novel thing uh, with the illustrations. Uh, I'll go in from that because there's still a lot of planning and still a lot of time before I even finish the actual novel but the previews have changed to its current form uh, for what it's for what it is now um, and the Delta which was supposed to come out never uh, actually didn't want to go through with that I kind of planned to have all of the verses or chapters uh, mixed in together and to make the one book um, this Neo Alpha it's uh, nine chapters long and in my language the book is uh, nine verses long and this includes a prologue to what the world is like and the prelude to the story and the book is about a hundred pages long but mostly and I mean a hundred pages of text and just uh, three character pictures three or four um, and it's about 15,000 words so far uh, but of course in the finalized version it's going to be probably three times more than that um, it's currently as I'm recording this right now at 5.06 a.m. on October 13, 2014 uh, this book is only available on Google Play for now and it is a version one book meaning that you might open the book and you might see a new picture you might see uh, some new text you might see some things gone so this is your time to get the book um, and if you read it all the way you, you might see some mistakes and in all its glory that's what I want to see I want to I want to make sure that there are and it's a little different than the traditional books they have to be finished and edited and everything before they go out on the Google but what some people don't know is that you can make your own book, upload it, and make any corrections that you need to make. Uh, so that's why it's on version one status right now. Um, you know, I, I promise to have it released regardless of its standing, and uh, had it edited a little bit, looked over it, and and now it's out. Um, also, again, it's free, but it's only free for a limited time so make sure that you check it out because if you don't download it now it's not going to be available in the future likely whenever there's a new version of a neo beta maybe or neo gamma and then there will actually be the real book and uh, you know of course that's the reason why I have uh, some aspirations of making it somewhere and a lot further than where I am right now so uh, once again, um, I want to thank everybody for just taking the time to listen to this video in my boring voice. And uh, if you need any more information, if you want to see any more images, you can always go to the websites that I have um, available here on the uh, screen. Uh, there's a Facebook account for both Iscaria and the XL Studios imprint and of course there's some like uh, and I'm not a big Instagram guy but got one uh, got XL Studios on uh, 
Facebook, Twitter, Twitch TV because I live stream sometimes and I'm recording this via uh, XSplit right now which is what I usually record my video game footages on or my live stream. Uh, Scary it's also available on Xbox Live. I don't have it listed but if you are a gamer you know and you want to play some Halo or Street Fighter uh, feel free to uh, challenge me or, or beat me up or whatever you want to do. Um, but uh, first I gotta I gotta say uh, thank you. Uh, I, I gotta say good night or good morning because uh, it's 5 a.m. in Jeju Island right now in Korea and it's time to go to sleep. But please download the book, read it, share it, rate it, comment, let me know what your problems are with the book, let me know how good it is, let me know how bad it is, if you like it, if your mom likes it, your sister likes it, it will really help because I can't go anywhere without you. So um, please do me that big favor and if you don't like to read and you know someone who likes to read, please let them know. I mean, this is their, this could be their gateway or something like that because it surely is mine. And uh, again, the story is a little different from other fantasy stories because it's like, uh, its action revolves around, uh, somewhat around magic powers, but mostly martial arts. Uh, and it's going to be a challenge writing this because there's not a lot of martial arts books uh, without pictures, of course. And then that's what we're hoping to do is to get more images so people can actually see what's happening. Um, once again, I gotta say thank you and have a lot of fun out there. I hope that you have fun reading it. If you don't, then I'm sorry. Just see if somebody else likes it and then uh, just keep going, all right? I don't know what to say. All I can say is uh, I love Batman, and <laughs> and I love Pikachu, Pika, and I uh, wanted to show you my Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta from Vietnam. Yeah, I know it's kind of crazy, but uh, anyways, I uh, hope you get, to get a chance to check out my writing, and have a good night. Take care. Bye.